So I finally started harvesting these uh, cooking tomatoes. Um, we've had so many tomatoes though that Debbie's been making loads and loads of passatas and ketchups, chilli jams and things. Just from ordinary cherry tomatoes to be honest. But uh, yeah, it looks like we're going to get a really nice harvest from these over the next few weeks. A friend of mine from down south just emailed me to say that he's not harvested a single tomato yet, which just seems pretty incredible. And he actually said the same with peppers, that uh, all of his peppers are still green. So I'm really happy with that first harvest. Up until today though it's really been the cherry tomatoes that uh, have been the star of the show and we only really grew these to eat fresh in salads but um, we ended up, we've ended up with so many as I said that we've we've ended up using some of them and you know they're so incredibly tasty that they do make a really good sauce but obviously their effort involved is uh, a bit higher than with the paste tomatoes but these are gorgeous I was picking these in last week's video and uh, really extolling the virtues of them because they're absolutely a top tomato and very few of them have gone to seed so these are aviditas and they are really nice I just eat the ones that split there's just a few of them generally speaking they're holding really well with just two harvests a week which is also just you know it's just really nice and convenient not to have to harvest every other day I've got to say I'm actually quite enjoying making these regular harvest videos normally you know in previous years I've only made them once a month um, because a lot of people said that you know they didn't really like harvest videos they found them too boring and too repetitive and but now a lot of people say they really enjoy the harvest videos so I don't really know what's changed maybe it's just that I've got a lot more subscribers and there's a small niche of people that enjoy them of course that's the beauty of YouTube you don't have to watch them if you don't want to watch them and uh, so yeah I'm kind of in the habit now of making them once a week instead as I say I'm enjoying it I've just cleared one of my interplanted beds of beetroot and so this bed was beetroot interplanted with onions and I pulled the onions a few days ago um, and I've just pulled the beetroot and to be honest both crops were great out of the same space and when I'm processing beetroot um, I normally just take the biggest ones and leave the smallest ones to uh, grow on but I need the bed for replanting so I'm taking them all out even little ones like this but these are a real treat and I just twist the tops off just pull the soil off the roots a little bit so there we go I think those will actually last us uh, about three weeks and we've got three more beds of beetroot to go at before we harvest our storage crop in October now I'm going to pick some sweet corn 
I actually picked a load yesterday, so don't need that much. I'm going to start at this end. Some of these look pretty good. I had a little look at them the other day. So I think I'm just going to pick like four or five from here. Really lovely. So I shot a tour video uh, that will go up in a couple of days time and I forgot to show the potatoes. So these are my Christmas potatoes and these are the ones that will be stored in the compost all the way through sort of January, February, March and into April. And so these are the last of the new potatoes basically and they're looking really nice. I like to start mine in July because I find that if I start them now, which is when some people are still starting theirs, mine just get knocked back by blight, uh, you know, in sort of September, October time. And if these get knocked back by blight, then that's fine because we'll have really good potatoes. And they store just great in the compost. So there's no real reason to start them late because they taste just perfect, harvested from the compost, even, you know, four or five months later. So these are the baby carrots that I've got for autumn. And I've got four months supply here. So half a container a week uh, for the next four months. And that means that we don't need to really start picking the uh, storage carrots, which are out there planted on the plot in the in the soil until certainly late autumn so I'm going to start picking these even though they will be really small I don't really mind that they're small you know they taste they taste just as nice and uh, they look lovely don't they so I'm going to pick half of this tub A nice little size so yeah I'll show you what we get now every week until autumn no, until December. So I'm really happy with those. A tiny bit of carrot fly damage just on the odd one, but uh, nothing to worry about. And I actually picked those because if you look carefully on some of these leaves, you can see they've got a bit of downy mildew. And so I picked the tub with the worst affected leaves and therefore the most stunted growth. But uh, generally speaking, I'm really happy for those, with those. I'm gonna pick some peppers and the first flush of the yellow peppers is kind of over but the plants are absolutely laden with green peppers so I'm really hopeful that we'll get a fantastic second harvest off these. Fortunately, we've still got some beautiful red peppers uh, just starting to come so I'm going to get on picking those. So I'm really happy with these. I think this is the fourth week of this sort of harvest that we've had and as I say, we've just got absolutely stacks still to come. So I, I've got a few green ones that I picked just because they had fallen off. It's just been so windy. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with what's to come. But I'd actually finished picking all the chilli peppers because ours came really early. And... Uh, no, <laughs> I think I missed this plant. There's certainly stacks on here. And these are actually our favoured chilli. We don't like them too hot. So, uh, I mean, this is the beauty of the cayenne pepper. It's so prolific and even just left outside to die like this one. Um, it still survived and it's given us a nice little harvest. Most of ours are in the freezer now. It's not so bad really for a second harvest. Second harvest of the scotch bonnet as well. Like the polytonal cucumbers have not done great this year. We've only really got one plant left out of three. Fortunately, it's still giving really nice cucumbers. These are Lediva, and these are my favourite favorite one. And as a result of these 
not doing so well. I have uh, left the ones in the conservatory and so we're still getting a really nice harvest from there. No, not, that's not so bad and we'll probably get the same again from the conservatory which will be plenty. And the courgettes for us are definitely slowing down now but the plants are old and they've given us such a huge yield we can't really so complain. My favourite brassica leaf are Brussels sprout leaves and I just like to take some of the younger ones uh, off each plant so I'll just take one leaf per plant we've got about 20 plants so uh, that should be quite nice I'll do the same with the collets just taking fairly young leaves so about that sort of size it's just absolutely that's kind of perfection in a leaf for me that a little bit of white fly on it but nothing to worry about that just washes off no problem at all is why I always rave about collets rather than cabbages because just from my little collet patch there I get effectively a cabbage every week well into winter and it's the same again for the Brussels sprout leaves absolutely gorgeous and I'm also going to pick some of these lovely kale leaves I just you just can't beat it can you they're just so incredibly beautiful to look at and such a lovely variety you know it's hard to believe really that all of these are just different varieties of kale this one's Pentland Brig this one's Scarlet I think Exactly sure which one this is, but it's a similar sort of thing. So I'm actually about to plant my parsley for overwintering, and I like to put new plants in, I think they're just more vigorous. Um, so I'm just picking down some of this and maybe we'll dry some. We'll certainly give a lot of it away. But uh, this is going quite well in the polytunnel. So there we go, that's it for the polytunnel and the rest of the allotment. And I count that as a bit of a success because we don't really want too much summer fruits on the allotment right now because we're trying to transition over to winter. So we've got a lot still to harvest back home. So it turned out that I was slightly uh, optimistic about the size of the yield of the polytunnel cucumbers, but we still got another three, so that's not so bad. So I'm in the back garden now, I've just got some uh, beans to pick, Carrot, a few more carrots, lettuces, blueberries, and also from the garden, you know, we've got a lot of stuff drying. So lots of garlic, lots of onions. It's about a quarter of the onions. Most of the potatoes are finished now. We're just piled up in containers, ready to be uh, harvested as required. So our raspberries and strawberries are pretty much finished now. So the only fruits we've got are blueberries and uh, plums right now. And I like to have a good handful of blueberries every day. So here's most of the cooked veg harvest for the week. It's looking pretty nice. I'll have a quick run through. I'm cheating a little bit, which I'll tell you in a minute. So these are the outdoor tomatoes. And then this is the cheat because actually these potatoes need to last us three weeks. So this is our normal potato harvest and so effectively it's just two of these containers a week uh, until May and then that's the time when we have new season potatoes from our early plantings but we've got a nice selection there so we've got the charlottes which are they're a new potato but you can use them for all sorts the sarpamira 
And that batch is particularly small. I'm hoping some of the others are a bit bigger than that. And those are the car, so really nice sizes. Nice selection. Got a few apples, got a few beans. And we'll probably have a quarter of that number of beans next week because the beans are coming to an end after the rough weather that they've had. They're all bashed up by the wind. Got a few dregs of uh, onions. We're just working our way through the use these first pile. And then we'll go on to really lovely pristine onions pretty soon. All sorts of summer squashes. And actually I just did pick a bit of asparagus. And then the beetroot, carrots, looking beautiful. And the sweet corn, and this is the second week we've had sweet corn. Those are from Debbie's plot, and those are from my plot. And then the chili peppers, red peppers, all these are sweet peppers, looking really lovely. The cooking tomatoes, celery, this is the cut, cut and come again celery, it's coming to its end now. Probably take that out in a couple of weeks' time. And rhubarb, baby leeks, uh, parsley, basil, uh, chard leaves and chard stalks. Our neighbour loves chard and she's from Italian descent and she, she loves the stems as well. Um, and kales and these are the collet leaves and the sprout leaves so that's not so bad and we'll be doing the salad table in a few minutes so here's the salad table so just the salad bases and the cucumbers and the tomatoes and that's the last of the golden purslane and just a few cucumelons as well so uh, not many of those now i'm going to clear that bed actually on monday and then we've got these are the onions so, to go into the salads because we don't have any spring onions at the moment but these are super sweet and just some nice organic grapes so that's definitely a harvest to make me smile so there we go, that's how they finish off. Gorgeous. So I hope you like that quick video. My name's Steve, this is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel. And if you want more details about how we garden then and how we harvest, then just take a look down below and you'll find a link to my free ebook. All about it. See you soon.